Prajakta ma'am. Thank you, Susan ma'am. Hola, bienvenidos, buenos días. Bienvenidos a nuestro programa de desarrollo docente. Gracias. Oh, gracias. Let us call upon Dr. Poonam Sharma to welcome you all in French. Thank Poonam. you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bonjour. Nous vous souhaitons la bienvenue à ce séminaire de développement des compétences pédagogiques et de recherche. Merci. Merci, Poonam, ma'am. Now, I would like to welcome Ms. Rupali Gadge to welcome us in German language. Thank you, Susan. Rupali. Hello, guten Morgen allerseits. Ich heiße Sie alle zu unserem Fakultätsentwicklungsprogramm willkommen. Vielen Dank. Okay, thank you, Rupali, ma'am. Well, I'm immensely happy to take this opportunity to welcome our honorable founder president, Dr. Ashok Chawan of Amity Education Group, and a warm welcome to our president and chancellor, Dr. Asim Chawan, Amity University, Maharashtra, both in absentia. A very warm welcome and a very happy welcome to our officiating vice chancellor, Lieutenant General V.K. Sharma, Amity University, Maharashtra. It is with immense pride and exuberance that we like to mention that our VC Sir, Lieutenant General VK Sharma is a recipient of the prestigious Ati Vishishta Seva Medal. It is indeed a privilege and an honor and an achievement to serve under the guidance of such iconic stalwarts. We blessed, we really are blessed and that's for sure. Moving on with the ceremony, let me welcome our most awaited chief guest, none other than our own Dr. Srikant Charate. Dr. Charate is our own Amity University member at Amity University, Maharashtra. Sir is the director of Amity School of Engineering and Technology, Amity University, Maharashtra. Sir is also the officiating dean academics of our university, Amity Maharashtra. Dr. Charate is also the senior honorary advisor, Cloud Counselage, Mumbai. Dr. Shrikan Charate, a PhD from IIT Mumbai, has the expertise in soft computing and application to water resources, ocean problem, and also has to his credit more than 32 years of teaching experience as an educationist, as an academic coordinator. Dr. Charate has worked in the capacity as vice president in an MNC Mumbai based company and has taken to his operations overseas and was instrumental in taking over BIT Mesra at Rasal Kaima, UAE. Sir has published more than 90 research papers, both in national and international conferences. He has guided two PhD candidates and eight scholars are working under his guidance and many more such accolades. Sir is also the examiner for PhD and MTEC scholars at IIT, NIT and many such reputed institutions and is also a reviewer of Scopus Index journals. Dr. Shrikan Charate is with various uh, board of studies, BOS Mumbai University, Pune University, Dr. D.Y. Patel University. So is also serving in various capacities as a chairperson and as a member to various prestigious academic committees. So all the good reason to confirm that, sir, you are indeed an asset to Amity University. <laughs> and I am honored and highly privileged to welcome, sir, on behalf of my colleagues and my friends here at Amity. I also wish to extend a hearty welcome to all the distinguished dignitaries who have joined us from across the country. I wish to welcome all the directors of uh, Amity. Mumbai and Maharashtra and all over the country, deans, heads of the institutions at Amity University and also our sister colleges and a highly esteemed participants today and all my colleagues here at the university. Now to talk about this FDP, the master brain behind this show is a much loved Dr. Swati Bisse. 
She is working in the capacity of an assistant professor here in ASL with us, AUM, a PhD scholar, an MA topper, a BOS member at Amity School of Languages, paper setter at Bharati Vidya Peet with good 10 years of teaching experience, along with academic administrations also, has published more than 16 papers at national and international journals, has prestigiously been awarded the Mahatma Jyotira Phule State Level Best Teacher Award and Kusum Tai Chawan Mahila Bhushan Award 2020 for Educational Awareness in Society by Mimansa Foundation, Maharashtra State Journalist Association, and many more such accolades to her credit. She is the vibrant force behind this program, and I feel highly elated to invite her to give us information about the FDP. Uh, I welcome you, Dr. Swati Bise, to give us more information about this. Swati, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning to one and all. Respected Dr. Ashok Chawan, Founder President of Amity Education Group. Dr. Asim Chauhan, Chancellor of Amity University, Maharashtra, Lieutenant General, General V.K. Sharma, AVSM, retired, Officiating Vice Chancellor of Amity University, Maharashtra, Dr. Srikant Charate, Dean Academics, Amity School of Engineering and Technology, Dr. Manjari Vaidya, HOI Amity School of Languages, and uh, the resource person for today's first session, Dr. Chumki Biswas, ma'am, respected professors, research scholars and my dear colleagues and all my dear participants. I am Dr. Swati Bise. I, Dr. Swati Bise, welcome you all on this online platform for this eight day faculty development program on pedagogy and research skill development organized by Amity School of Languages, Amity University, Maharashtra. At outset of this FDP, I am very much delighted to share with you all that we have got overwhelming response from all over the world. We have among us not only the participants from different states of India, but also we have some participants from Nepal, Angola, Uzbekistan, Romania, Argentina. I thank you all for showing such encouraging participation. It is going to be a pioneering faculty development program as we are blessed with the consent of all renowned experts from discipline of education. And I'm sure that this FDP will give us new insights to look at the productive fields of pedagogy and research. I would like to quote a very famous personality, Benjamin Franklin O'Year. Tell me, I, I forget. Teach me, I may remember. Involve me and I learn. As it is rightly said uh, by Benjamin Franklin, and hence uh, this faculty development program aims at holistic development of the faculty members. As we all know that the time is changing so rapidly and this pandemic crisis has transformed us like not before. We, being in the teaching profession, must be right on toes to acquire the changes happening around us and develop some new habits and practices in our teaching field. Keeping this in our mind, we have identified some of the important areas for discussion. While designing this FDP, we have kept in our mind that it should be inclusive of both areas, pedagogy and research. Pertaining to this, you could find that we try to call compromise the major topics of both these areas. Sorry, we we. We uh, try to comprise the major topic of both areas like teaching and research in Internet era. ICT tools used for teaching and research challenges of virtual classroom, writing research papers, methodology of research, so and and so forth. So our main so our main aim behind this FDP is to enrich ourselves with knowledge and to bring some qualitative changes by doing our research. Thus, the overall view of this FDP 
is to develop our te teaching and research skills. I will not take much of your time, but before concluding my introductory speech, I would like to thank our uh, HOI Dr. Manjari Vaidya Madam and Ms. Mrs. Susan, Su Susan Shibu Ma'am for their guidance and constant support and also to my team members for putting in a lot of efforts for the success of this FDP. And I strongly hope that this FDP will be very fruitful for all of us. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Over to you, Susan, ma'am. Thank you, Swati Bise, ma'am. Moving on now. Now is the crowning glory. Ma'am, you are on mute. I think I need to be unmuted. Am I audible now? Fine, I shall start once again. Well, now is the clown crowning glory. We are proud to announce about our respected head of the institution, Dr. Manjri Vaidya, a young, dynamic, multi-talented, cheerful, and all empathic personality. That's our Mandri Nam. With over 22 years of teaching, UG, PhD, and PhD scholars. Madam's topic for MPhil was sociolinguistics and PhD in feminism in Indian English literature from Mumbai University. Ma'am is a yoga practitioner for more than 30 years, a creative writer with more than 100 poems in English and Marathi, and a recipient of worldwide eighth rank distinguished poet in, in international English poetry competition for her poem, Rise and Fall. An active researcher in the area like digital literature, innovations in English language and literature, linguistics, comparative literature, English language and literature, also recognized as a PhD guide for English language and literature at Amity School of Language. Dr. Manjri Vaidya is a chairperson of Board of Studies English, French, Spanish at ASL AUM, member of Board of Studies in Media and Communication in Pillai College of Arts, Commerce and Science, Autonomous College, Shri Panvel. Madam is also the external paper setter for BSc IT, CKT, Autonomous College, New Panvel. She is also the member of uh, BOS in English, of Abeda Inamdar Senior Autonomous College of Arts, Science and Commerce at Pune. Madam was a judge in many competitions, conveyed to many events and was also in the board of interviews. So as you see, we have so many reasons to be very proud of our Manjari ma'am. And now, before I invite her, I'm taking this liberty and privilege to announce that her ma'am is celebrating her birthday too. What a beautiful day to celebrate a birthday. So I know you are very tempted to wish her, but we shall hold it for a moment. And now I invite our dear Manjri madam to make the key addresser. Manjri ma'am, here you go. Thank you so much, Susan ma'am. Uh, hello and good morning to one and all virtually present here. Hope you all are fine and doing well. Uh, first of all, let me thank you for your overwhelming response for this faculty development program on pedagogy and research development skills. I welcome the chief guest of today's inaugural function, Dr. Srikant Charate, sir, Dean Academics, Amity University, Maharashtra. The resource person for today's first session, Dr. Chunki, all the heads of various institutions and departments, faculty members, participants, and the research scholars. Friends, let me introduce you to Amity Education Group first. Amity Education Group is one of the India's leading private non-profit education groups of offering globally benchmarked education right from preschools to doc doctoral programs. It comprises of more than 10 universities, 17 schools and preschools, uh, 150 plus institutions and seven international campuses. 
Dr. Ashok Chauhan, the Honorable Founder President of Amity Education Group, and Dr. Asim Chauhan, the Chancellor, and Dr. V. K. Sharma, the Officiating Chancellor of Amity University, Maharashtra, have a vision to transform the future of education by a true blend of knowledge, application, opportunity, ethics, and excellence. Therefore, Amity Institutes are emerging among the most sought after education destinations. Amity University Maharashtra is the first private university in Maharashtra, which focuses on research and innovation, offering undergraduate, postgraduate, and doctoral programs in various disciplines through 17 professional institutions or schools. Many a times there is a confusion uh, for the outsiders, when we say Amity School of Languages, there is misunderstanding as if we are teaching our faculty of schools, but it's Amity train, Amity fashion. Uh, so as far as Amity School of Languages is concerned, it plays a strategic role in enhancing the language competency of UG and PG students in various languages such as English, French, German and Spanish through a formal training program and tie-ups with foreign embassies. We are also keen in arranging faculty and student exchange programs with universities in France, German, UK and Spain to get learning and cultural experience in native ambience. The school offers BA honors in French and BA honors in English, PhD in English and minor, minor track program in English literature. Uh, here, once again, I would like to uh, share with you that uh, our founder president and our president, uh, they and all Amity management is visionary in the sense that 25 years back, they had uh, uh, involved the idea of minor track or flexi learning programs like minor track and foreign languages, behavioral science in curriculum of UG and PG. Uh, this is quite important and visionary decision because you probably know that uh, now this flexi learning is included in new education policy 25 years after, after Amitra. Uh, so foreign language acquisition is, uh, first let me tell you about minor track program, what it is. Minor track program is a minor degree which students can uh, acquire along with their uh, core degree. Like for, uh, for example, if there is a student of engineering and he or she is interested in fashion, then the student gate can take a major degree in engineering and minor degree in fashion. Uh, similarly, uh, in Amity, foreign language acquisition is a compulsory uh, part of uh, curriculum. And this, we I may say that this is USP of Amity. Uh, as a part of engaging and experiential learning, student-driven activities are organized, like a students publish a literary magazine. They read and keep themselves updated through readers' club activities and organize annual language phase like Parnassus, the English Fest, and Foreign Language Day in the month of March every year. Uh, here at Amity, we dream and strive to make the dream come true. I'm very fortunate to lead 28 young, talented, and extremely enthusiastic and dedicated faculties. The organization of this FDP is possible only because of them. So I hope that this FDP will transfer and enrich us all. Uh, thank you so much again and wish you happy and healthy life on International Yog Day. Thank you so much. Over to you, Susan, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. That was indeed wonderful to hear from you, ma'am, as usual. And uh, very thank you for uh, your valuable information and vital details. Now, moving on with our inaugural ceremony, I request our chief guest, 
Dr. Srikant Sarate to share his thoughts and experiences with us. Dr. Charate, you're welcome. Good morning, uh, Susan, madam. I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me, not as a chief guest, because I'm a member of Amiti and I'm as a teacher over here. Good morning to one and all. I could see around 180 plus participants. It's very heartening to see all the participants, not only from India, but from abroad. And I could see on screen complete entire Amity School of Languages, the strength. Very well crafted, drafted uh, the uh, poster behind all of you. And it looks very fresh. So in pandemic, in fact, today we shouldn't remember the pandemic because there are three great things happening today. One is International Yoga Day, 7th International Yoga, yoga Day, which the yoga is tendering our health. And it must in this pandemic or any time. And we had good session from 7.30 morning to uh, 8.45. And it was conducted by Yoga Chare Mevalalji Maharaj from Gayatri Parivar, Madhya Pradesh. The second great thing is at 9.30 again, the FDP Faculty Development Program on Pedagogy and Research Skill Development is happening. Eight days program, there are 16 speakers. And when I went through the uh, topics of speakers, I think I need to attend every session if time permits. Because it's kind of vision of the information and as a teacher, you're al always learning. I could see the uh, welcome from all of you, though I did not understand, but welcome from all the languages. And, and that's a great, great, great thing. Third thing is, I wish Dr. Manjiri happy birthday. Because she is a torchbearer of Amity School of Languages. And uh, with 4,500 students handling across, I mean, it's not just school, it's handling across all the students of Amity. And we always, after uh, her um, faculty and uh, lang language faculty, and she's uh, bringing uh, most uh, talented faculty uh, in. And all faculty members, I see, very committed. Second thing I would like to congratulate to uh, all the members, Dr. Swati Bise, for organizing this FDP, which is of unique kind, very much unique proposition because pedagogy and uh, research skill development, these are the aspects you have to learn all the time. And being my 32 years of uh, uh, learning experience, I can't say teaching experience, but learning experience all the time. I learn many things in this pandemic. Students are more uh, in evolving mood compared to teachers. Sometimes I, I, I just say to my teacher that students are quite ahead of you because they are continuously on the Internet and we just started. So adoption of various process online. That's very much close to the heart of every teacher right now and really they are doing wonderful on this online platform also. But I'd like to go uh, step by step uh, at what, what exactly pedagogy because I'm not going to go through the whole uh, scenario. There are experts. Dr. Biswas is going to start the first session. But adoption of new methodology teaching uh, and learning since there are ever evolving processes and these are very much close to new generations because what you teach to small kid right now, they already learn. And yesterday when I called uh, one of my friend and I said your phone tune is very nice and it's very different kind of uh, balle balle kind of thing. So he said my son who is of just two years, he changed the tune. And I wonder how can it happen because there are so many things when you even you change the tune. In fact, we struggle sometimes to get it. So this is kind of evolving processes. 
and nowadays the major scenario is how to how to, is, it is to be adopted in changing environment and thereby framing new ways to learn in every aspect whether in education field or in industry processes because everything is evolving and there is industry 4.0 and industry 4.0 says everything has to be mm -hmm. done, done smartly and with machine. So in ever evolving world, organizations need to bring the change in their approach to look towards delivery. Best example, as everybody can, is, can see, is COVID-19 scenario. It changed mm -hmm. the entire quantum from delivery to learning on virtual platform. And as I said, students are more updated now and have adopted the reality to understand, graph the online learning, and so the teachers with their innovative techniques is known is visible on the platform. So sometimes we go on speaking on virtual platform and we do not see anybody. So we do not understand who is uh, grasping, who is not, what students are doing, but there is wonderful connection amongst them. So I won't talk much on the pedagogy part, but I would like to focus on the main five part that is the constructivity when the learner should go through the approaches like for the constructivity that is building the methods and helping to create right environment for dissemination in the another part is collaborative approach students or the learners to work in pairs or in groups to understand the problems and to help each other in even slow learning can learner can learn and create synergy in the system i would like to give one example here because in earlier institute when we used to teach to the students or my faculty members the students were with average uh, percentage kind of 50 percent in 12 to 60 70 percent that's it and my faculty member used to always complain how we can teach to all the students and how can we get the result which you need 100 or sorry 70 percent plus or 80 percent plus so then we wanted to help to the students and to the teachers also and what we did we created kind of workshop that is study workshop so we asked students to sit in the group of eight students so on one table there were eight students on another table there were eight students and we have allotted three tables to one faculty to resolve their issues that means we have given them notes, ask them to write, rewrite, correct, and at the same time. So the sessions were like from morning 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock to 4.30. And they were allowed to speak, they were allowed to discuss, they were allowed to uh, talk to anybody. So this was the kind of synergy we brought into them so that uh, they can more interact and they should know how, how to write, what to write, how to graph and what should be the output. So this is kind of collaborative uh, approach and an inquiry based approach. That means anywhere I go, anywhere in the market also, even I have to buy a small things. If I inquire about something, that's again learning process. I get better product, I get better price. So taking into account live problem, situation based concepts and imagining situations, how we can pass the hurdle to march to the next level. So this is kind of inquiry based approach where we can get the filter. And then integrative approach. So where lessons can learn while interacting with others, cross fertilization of ideas and thoughts. So generation of idea, generation of thought in any process is important because the next part is the research skill development. Unless until you generate your ideas, you have uh, something in your mind, you have thought process, things will not happen. Now, if I if I put one slide on uh, on screen, one can speak about half an hour on one slide. So that means what is written on one slide, the thoughts is in the mind of the speaker. The another form of learning is outcome based. So learners to reflect what is expected outcome and how it can be achieved. So every process is now a day outcome based. Uh, if you look at the uh, processes of NAC, NBA, we say CO, that means course outcome. Then it is totally depend on outcome based learning, the Bloom's taxonomy, 
where the learner has to know or the learner should know what he is being taught, how he has graphs and what are, what is what will be the output of his course or program or program output. And after that also, if somebody is somebody is being taught for four years a particular course. Now I am from civil engineering, so civil is being taught for candidate for four years. I need to know after three, four years or after two years or three years after passing out. What that candidate is doing. That means whether he is in the core courses, core programs or core field, whether he has diverted his field into any other um, domain. Or whether he is using the knowledge, utilizing the knowledge, whatever he got during four years. Here I would like to mention one important point because uh, uh, many times people say that it's a theoretical knowledge when, when whatever you, you learn in, in, in colleges and in schools. That's not theoretical knowledge, it's a basic knowledge. Because when you go on the field, basic has to be applied. So that is kind of outcome based knowledge. And this is kind of the uh, pedagogical, pedagogical approaches or uh, ingredients of pedagogy because there's, there may be some uh, different focuses by each institute, whether it's educational institute or whether it's uh, whether it's um, uh, any any industry process. I would like to shift to the another part of the FDP that is research skill skills and development. These three words they are interconnected to each other. Now people sometimes miss uh, uh, misquote the research. Research is kind of anything you do, any anything you do in the sense research may be related to the languages, research may be related to the ancient literature, research may be related to the technology or anything. Whatever you search, research, analyze and put it into your own words and in technology we bring it to the innovation. And if you go to the villages, we can call it as sometimes you got because we see many times the pictures and uh, uh, funnily we, we call it as uh, a but it's it's it, these are the great ideas which are developed with very minimal uh, cost and the efforts by the concern which which serve the purpose for the human humankind. So but nowadays in most common and important time in this teacher's life because I could see around 200 uh, close to teachers here on this platform that the managements are asking for the research do some research and i know the teachers are very busy but at the same time we need to develop the skills uh, friends when uh, i started my phd because uh, when i when i when we, i joined at 1989 till 2000 there was no pressure of uh, phd or research so we joined late for our phd's and I was wondering how can I do the research because I was not aware about anything. And when I went to IIT, it was kind of ocean where people were aware about the softwares, were about different kind of methods of uh, innovations and all these kind of things. And I was put into a new tool, the artificial intelligence or soft computing kind of artificial neural network where I was not aware about the ANN. So the best method is to search literature on this. Talk to the people. Attend various programs. Talk to the students also because I was I came across with BTEC and MTEC students. So they were my friends because they were teaching me. So it's kind of learning process to enhance. My skills I said to enhance my skills because the skills were at that time when I joined was almost close to uh, minimal. And after one year I could realize that there is so much to learn. So basically research is not restricted to only uh, in fact even as I say uh, educational field but research is understand what others have done. Analyze them study study their limitations. And find out outcome critically and build your concept. So Ultimately, we have to do good for ourselves, for human being. And the research tools has to be adopted properly in whatever field. And has to bring to a certain level for the humankind. Kind of uh, product development, generation of ideas through product development again and building some new things. So this I wanted to link all these kind of things. The 
uh, FDP, which is very, very deep. In fact, uh, uh, when I when I look at the uh, various uh, 16 programs, 16 topics here given, I think it's wonderful combination of what exactly learner has to do. So once again, I would like to thank you, Dr. Manjari, Dr. Swati Vise, Dr. Susan Madam, and whole team of Amity School of Languages. And Amity School of Language, I say it's not really limited to only School of Languages, but it's entire university you people are handling. It's wonderful and bringing everybody on this particular platform. And the moment I'm going to finish my talk right now, the number is going increasing. I said 170 when I started, now 100, 200. Now it's already crossed 210 and there is addition of one faculty every second or student. It's a wonderful gesture from all of you. Thank you very much for inviting me and I'm amongst you. So uh, enjoy all eight days and when your time permits, I will definitely join. Thank you very much for um, all your uh, support to me in, in my school and in entire university. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was wonderful to hear from you. Very encouraging. And uh, we promise we will integrate more into uh, the Institute, uh, um, Amity University, Maharashtra, and we will serve better. And of course, we will meet your expectations. Thank you for being a part of us. And on behalf of Amity School of Languages, uh, Maharashtra, I would like to, we all would love to, request you to declare the eight day faculty development program on pedagogy and research skills development program open. So please do us. Thank you, Susan, ma'am. I declare that the wonderful, the best combination FDP of pedagogy and research skill development, uh, which is conducted by Amity School of uh, Languages under the able guidance of Dr. Banjiri Vaidya, the cook owner, Dr. Swati Bise, and whole team of ASL. So I declare that the FDP from 21 to 28, 21st of June to 28th of June is open and hope participants will enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Once again, a heartfelt gratitude for honoring us with your presence from bottom of our hearts. So thank you very much. Stay blessed. Thank now, you. Would, yes, sir. Now I would like to invite Ms. Deepti Rokde to give us the vote of thanks for the inaugural session. Over to you, Deepti. Madam, thank uh, you, Susan. Madam, ma Deepti Ma'am is also the coordinator of the Department of Academics and Exam Cell of French. She's also the event coordinator at ASL with a teaching experience of seven years, a very vibrant and active member of our family. Yes, Deepti Ma'am. Thank you so much, Susan Ma'am. Thank you so much. Am I audible? Am I clear? Yes, you are. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. First, on behalf of Amity School of Languages, Amity University, Maharashtra, I, Dipti Rukde, would like to thank our founder president of Amity Group, Dr. Ashok Chauhan, sir, president chancellor of Amity University, Maharashtra, Dr. Asim Chauhan, sir, vice chancellor, Lieutenant General uh, V.K. Sharma, sir, our today's chief guest, T. Academics, Dr. Srikant Charande, sir, the HOI of Amity School of Languages, Amity University, Maharashtra, and convener of this event, Dr. Manjiri Vaidya, ma'am, and all other HOIs from different departments and universities, our eminent guest speakers, faculty members, and all the participants for taking out their valuable time to attend the inauguration of faculty development program on pedagogy and research skills development. Your presence is great honor and contributes to the success of the ceremony. With immense pleasure, we welcome over 699 registered participants from different universities across the world, and we hope to continue to receive support and cooperation from all of you during the entire faculty development program. No one arrives at a moment like this without the help and support of a great many people 
So please indulge me while I take some time to acknowledge and thank them. To our convener of the event and HOI of MC School of Languages, Amity University, Maharashtra, Dr. Manjiri Vaidya Ma'am, for her constant support, encouragement, and guidance. To our co convener of the event, Dr. Swati Bise Ma'am, for her passion, energy, and dedication. To my colleagues who are the strength of the institution for all the hard work they have put in for making this faculty development program possible within a very short timeline. To our senior faculties for their wise counsel and authenticity. Please accept my heartfelt and deepest gratitude to all. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Susan. Ma'am. Over to you. With this, we come to the end of the inaugural function and time to get on with our session started. Dear participants, please gear up. Susan, ma'am, you are on mute. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, thanking you, Deepti, ma'am. With this, we come to the end of the inaugural function and uh, time to get on with some session started. Dear participants, please gear up from some good listening and beneficial learning from my eminent speakers lined up for the event throughout the eight days. Uh, now, moving on with our session, I would like to invite Dr. Swati Bise to welcome our first speaker of the day and even Dr. Chumki Biswa. Over to you, Swati ma'am. Thank you, Susan ma'am. Good morning and uh, good morning once again and a very warm welcome to when and all present over here. Today we are going to start the ventures of FTP with the first session by Dr. Chumki Biswas on importance of developing teaching and research skills in the internet era. I warmly welcome to all our today's speaker Chumki Ma'am who is very friendly, energetic, creative and a captivating orator. She is highly experienced English language language professional with specialization in areas like teachers training, curriculum development, English language, test material development, business communication, organizational behavior and soft skills. She, she has done her master's in 2002 from University of Mumbai. She has received scholarship for the year 2002 for acquiring highest marks in MA with teaching of English as a second language as a specialization subject. She has completed her PhD from University of Mumbai. Her PhD research topic is development of an oral skills program focusing on rhetorical abilities and fluency activities through task based teaching. She is in profession. Uh, she is in teaching profession since last 20 years. She was associated with Kohinoor, Kohinoor Carlton Business School, Kandala, affiliated to Carlton University, Canada during the years 2003 and 2004. She was also associated with Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, during the years 2010 and 2014 as a visiting faculty. She is working as an ELT trainer and resource person in Oxford University Press, India from 2009 till the date. She has also worked as a trainer and a mentor at Oxford Cells Academy, United Kingdom from 2014 to 2015. Presently, she is working as an assistant professor at Thadomal Sahani Engineering College, University of Mumbai. She is examiner, moderator, paper setter, and a member of Board of Studies in University of Mumbai. She was awarded with the Professor Manuel F. Colasso Memorial Award. She was awarded with a professorship of Sprott School of Business at Carlton University, Ottawa, Canada. She is working as the Secretary of English Language Teaching Circle, Bombay. She is responsible for arranging and conducting yearly ELT workshops and seminars. Certified Beck higher level from University of Cambridge. She is a certified trainer for CAT and GMAT from I IMS India. And this is not enough about her. I will, I will not 
take much time because you will get to know more about her in the session. I would like to request Dr. Chumki Biswas ma'am to enrich us with her knowledge of the topic importance of developing teaching and research skill in the internet era. Before ma'am pros madam proceeds, I would like to request all the participants to post their question in the chat box. Over to you ma'am. Chumki ma'am. I welcome Chumki ma'am. Over to you ma'am. Yes. Uh... Thank you, uh, Dr. Bise, for that uh, long introduction, I must say, you know. I feel bad that you had to read through my entire, uh, you know, CV to make a synopsis of it. If I had known you're going to put in so much hard work, I would just have written like two, three lines about myself and send it to you. But thank you so much for painstakingly introducing me. Um, first of all, I would uh, like to thank uh, the entire Amity University family uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity uh, to be here today. And it is an even uh, bigger honor to be the person to kickstart uh, with the first, uh, uh, you know, topic of uh, the eight day faculty program that you have planned. Um, I would take this opportunity to wish uh, Dr. Manjri Vedya a very happy birthday. And um, I know some of you, uh, like uh, Dr. Susan Shibu, I know you by uh, face. And uh, yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Bise, for coordinating with me throughout. Uh, before I start, uh, I would also like to put in a point uh, for the dear participants. Now, so many people have attended, and I must say that there were a few uh, of my friends who have participated just because I've requested them. Uh, Many of them have uh, lectures and classes, and despite that, just to give me moral support, they're here today. So I really need to uh, send out a big uh, thank you uh, for being there for me. OK, so having said that, um, first, I would like to start with an activity uh, before I move into my slides, because this activity, I feel, uh, will uh, inform us better about what I have in store for you. So I would request uh, Shashank, sir, just please uh, post the link. Now, uh, this is a ranking activity where I have given you uh, one request. Please, uh, please stop uh, sending uh, good morning messages because there's a bing every time. There's a binging sound every time you type in a message. So until and unless it is absolutely necessary for you to share anything in the chat box, Please uh, don't uh, keep typing good morning. Uh, I, I'm, you know, it's a request from me. OK, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so coming back to the first activity that I have planned for you, it's a ranking activity where I have mentioned 10 qualities, essential qualities of a, a teacher. Now, most of the people who are present here today are already in the teaching profession or they're aspiring to be teachers. So it is it is something that you know will be uh, of uh, great importance to you to be able to rank the qualities which you think are essential for a good teacher. Now there are 10 qualities, but we are very short uh, on time. So I have requested you only to rank the first three qualities out of these 10 qualities which are essential. I want you to rank them as which quality is the most essential for a good teacher? What is the second most essential quality? And what is the third most essential quality? Now, once you submit the Google form, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to take you to the Google form and show the results of the survey as to what most of the teachers think. It's, it's a kind of a consensus. It's a survey. So, you know, there is no pressure on you. You're free to uh, you know, answer whatever you feel uh, is uh, right according to you. And we will just have a look at it and then I will go on to my slides. Uh, yeah, uh, ma'am, just before I, uh, I have already uh, posted the link in the chat box, right. uh, which right. the participants can access uh, by clicking on the uh, conversation icon at the top of the screen. Uh, Ma'am, is it uh, OK if I also share the link in our FDP uh, groups that we have formed for the candidates? Or? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, whichever way okay. they can access it and I can yes. get the responses is good for me. Uh, it can be on any platform anyway. OK, ma'am. So uh, I, I will, any uh, of the, 
Yes, uh, so I'm also going to post these link, uh, the links in, in our WhatsApp groups, so you can also access it from there. Okay. So if any participant, if you are finding uh, any problem in, uh, uh, you know, uh, opening the link, please let us know. We will try to help you. At least uh, Shashank sir will try to help you. I'm going to stop my video and just go ahead and share my screen and I'll move on to my Google form to see the responses. So you'll be able to hear me, uh, but you will not be able to see my face, which I feel is fine. Susan, ma'am, is my screen visible? Uh, yes, ma'am. OK, yes, fantastic. And I, I see there are already four people who have responded. They have sent in their response. That was really fast. <laughs> okay. So this is this is the graph of the first question. It's color coded. So once uh, I get uh, at least maybe, uh, you know, 200 responses, uh, I'll uh, try and analyze what the graph says. Okay, uh, someone's uh, a microphone is on. Can you please check and mute yourself? Yeah, thank you. OK, I'm going to wait until we reach maybe 100 responses and then I will uh, analyze the graph.
Okay, so uh, uh, since I have uh, more than 100 responses here today, uh, I'm going to just uh, talk about the first one, which says that which is the most important quality of a teacher. And if you notice that uh, there's a predominance of uh, the green colors, uh, the dark green and the light green, and we have a predominance of uh, the ninth statement. It's not shown here. The ninth statement, which says that you help students to be independent and do their own work, uh, you know, is around 30 percent in the remaining 30 percent. You can say almost is uh, uh, the uh, fourth point, which says that, you know, you need to upgrade and, uh, you know, uh, kind of um, work upon your own uh, knowledge. So. I'm very happy to see that, uh, you know, almost 50% uh, of the people who are here on this platform today are of a similar opinion uh, where you understand uh, that, uh, you know, the main purpose of a teacher is to teach and you possibly cannot go and teach anything when your own knowledge is shaky. So I think uh, the most important quality uh, again, it's it's a very subjective thing, but m more than anything else, the first thing that teachers need to work on is brushing up on their skills. Whatever you learned maybe 20 years back might not be applicable anymore today. So constantly, you know, upgrading your skills and, and you know, uh, updating your skills is the need of the R. And the reason why we are having sessions and webinars like this today is to change the mentality of the remaining people who have chosen other answers. Now you can make your students independent and autonomous in their work after you have shown them how to fish, but first you have to show them how to fish so that they can fish for themselves. And in order to be able to teach students how to fish, you should be aware of the latest techniques in fishing. Now that's just an example. So uh, my main purpose in coming to this particular uh, activity was to establish that uh, the three most important uh, qualities of a teacher, you know, uh, once you actually sit down and think a little more about it. The first one I feel is the fact that you should update yourself, which is what I have already spoken about. The second skill is that like you might be very, very educated. You might be having a double PhD, but the moment you enter the classroom and you open your mouth and your students fall off to sleep, then you have lost your audience. So it is not just enough to be knowledgeable. You should be able to go and deliver it interestingly in the classroom, which is a very important quality of a good teacher. Whether you're teaching in kindergarten or you're teaching at the master's level, the same thing applies. And the third thing which many of you agree on and I agree on is the fact that you ultimately want to make the students independent and do their work on their own. They should be able to apply the knowledge that you're transferring to them. OK, so uh, the purpose uh, behind this activity is more or less sorted, and I'm hoping that by the end of the webinar, uh, the remaining 50 percent of the participants who have other answers might be convinced to look at things the way uh, that uh, most of the world is looking, where we say that research upgrading uh, is the most important quality of a teacher. So I will uh, stop sharing this particular screen and I'll start with my presentation today. Uh, before I start, I just want a confirmation from one of you whether you can see my screen and you can hear me properly. Yes, ma'am, we can see you oh, as well oh. as hear you clearly. OK, thank you. Thank you. In, in case my my face style is visible, uh, Shashank sir, just remove it. I don't want it to interfere with the slides. So the audience should only be able to see the slides and not my face. So please uh, do the settings from your end. OK, thank you, ma'am. Now, um, if you if you go to the uh, the, the brochure for the webinar, uh, the topic is given as the importance of teaching and research. Now, when I started preparing my slide, I thought to myself that every teacher today is aware of the importance of, you know, teaching and research. So I would rather talk about the implications of teaching and research uh, in what specifically in the, uh, you know, Internet era. 
Now, what I mean by implications is that we are extensively using the Internet and there are a lot of consequences to using Internet. You know, there are good points and there are also a lot of drawbacks. So as teachers and as researchers, we need to be aware of all of these so that we can use the Internet in the best possible way. OK, so uh, my purpose today is basically threefold. I'm going to take you through three different things that I want to focus on. Uh, the first one is that I want to differentiate between the term search and research. Now, the reason I felt that I should spend some amount of time in my talk to talk about these two uh, words is because most of the times we are confusing the concept of research with search. We end up doing a lot of search and then we label it and term it as research. Uh, but we need to understand that search and research are quite different uh, in nature. So the first part of my talk today will be to establish a difference, a marked difference between search and research, and also to show you which is applicable when. Next, I'm going to be talking about, uh, you know, a cautionary tale of the use of Internet for teachers who are teaching in the classroom and also for researchers. You know, the Internet has a lot of implications and there are a lot of ways in which you should or you should not use the Internet. And uh, the third part of my talk today, I'm going to be talking about how we can, uh, you know, leverage uh, the Internet to teach and to reach out to students. So when you're teaching in the classroom, you're teaching out to localized students. But when you're researching with the help of the Internet, you are taking your findings and research to the whole world. So I'm going to be talking about three, these three aspects. So uh, starting with the first um, you know, part where I'm going to differentiate between search and research. OK, so let me start with an example. Now, every time we want to go to a new address, most of us have, you know, um, a Google map installed on our phones uh, or tabs and then we go and we search for it. So searching entails that the information already exists out there and somebody or a group or a team of people have worked hard to make that information available to you. Your job is only to type in the search box and locate it and reach the place where you want to go. This is what a search entails. But uh, let us take the example of a scientist, you know, sending a rover to uh, the planet Mars. Now here they want to explore and see if is a possibility of human beings going and settling out there. So, you know, they have no idea what they're going to find. They're taking a leap in the dark and, you know, whatever information they find or they don't find, they can draw some conclusions on the basis of it. So if they don't find something, they can conclude something. If they find something, then also they come to a conclusion. So this coming to a conclusion on the basis of what you have found, you know, on the basis of analyzing, you know, your findings is the basic essence of research. So now that we have uh, looked at an example, I want to talk about some of the differences between search and research. And the first parameter against which I'm going to compare the two is the purpose. Now, the purpose of search is to find, uh, you know, missing items. So, you know, I don't know the date on which Abraham Lincoln was born. So it is a missing piece of information uh, in my existing knowledge database. So I go on the Internet and I search for the missing information. The other purpose of search is, you know, when we come across, uh, you know, small problems in our day to day life and we want to fix it. For example, uh, one or two weeks back, my laptop crashed and I could not, uh, you know, um, restart my laptop. So I went on Google and I tried, you know, fixing the problem by listening to what people have to say about, you know, small things that I can do on my own without giving it to the repair center. So, you know, finding missing information and finding solution to small, uh, you know, everyday problems is the purpose of searching. Now, when we're talking about research, the research is about uncovering new information. OK, it is absolutely new. Uh, next thing is updating current knowledge. Uh, for example, for the last one and a half year, there has been 
constant research about the different strains of COVID and every other you know, month you hear news about how scientists and researchers have found yet another strain of COVID. So you keep on adding to the existing knowledge and updating that is a purpose of research. And the other one is to determine uh, facts from lies, you know, so there are so many, uh, you know, things uh, going around in the world. So you analyze and see which of them is actually truth, which of them is uh, untruth. So these are some of the purpose why people undertake research. Now, if I summarize in a single word the concept of research, I would call it a finding information. But if I summarize and I find the synonym for research, I call it as creating, uh, you know, informa information. So moving on to the next, uh, you know, parameter of comparison is data. Now, when you're searching, basically you're looking at secondary data. Now, what do I mean by secondary data? Data which already was collected by someone and is there existing somewhere, maybe in the form of a hard copy of a book or in the form of an ebook or on a website. So this information that you're looking for has already been collected by someone and stored somewhere. You're just going and accessing it. So you are not the first person to you know, create or get or collect this data. So hence, search is always, always, always about uh, you know, secondary data. But when we're talking about research, research or good research, if you want to um, put it that way, is mostly about dealing with primary data. That means you are actually going out in the world to collect raw data. Now, what are the two sources of raw data? One is the people around you. They are the sources of raw data or else the environment around you that you are studying. So these are the two primary sources of primary data. And uh, research can also be a combination of primary plus secondary data. OK, so that means you are involving in, say, 80 percent primary data, but maybe, you know, for some background theory, you're referring to somebody else's work, which has been written in books or journals and things like that. So uh, in terms of data, this is uh, the difference. Moving on uh, to the third difference between search and research is the process in which you search. Now, when you're talking about search, it's a, it's a random procedure. There, is, there are no specific rules in which way you should search or what time or how you should go about it. OK, and what when you're searching, it does not require a lot of uh, specialized tools or strategies. What do we do? We simply go to, uh, you know, any search engine, say Google or Bing or Yahoo. We go to the uh, you know, search bar, we type in what we need to search. But when we're talking about research, research involves very definitive steps and stages, and there is no skipping the stages. They have a very fixed route, you can say. And also, it requires a specific tool, you know, tools, sorry, and uh, strategies. Uh, for example, you might have to use, uh, you know, statistical uh, tools, or you might have to use a strategy to design your uh, entire experiment. You want to make it a survey-based experiment, so you have to figure out a strategy to get to the people and get the answer from them. So, you know, this is the difference in terms of how you proceed with search and research. Moving on to the next level of comparison, which is in terms of expertise. Now, to search, you don't need any qualification. Uh, even the uninitiated or even the person who is not very educated can go ahead and search for information online. Uh, but when you're talking about research, research entails that you need to have at least some amount of formal training where you understand the concept of research, the methodologies that you need to follow to you know, undertake research. And uh, moving on, uh, we are going to uh, the next uh, you know, layer of comparison, which is in terms of regulation. Now, search is not monitored. Nobody is looking at what time of the day you're searching or how you're searching. Uh, you're not answerable to anybody. Uh, you can wake up in the middle of the uh, you know, night and start searching something. But when you're talking about research, it is monitored and regulated, which means that you have to uh, you know, submit reports, uh, interim uh, you know, results and everything, and it's a regulated process. Now, uh, next question you'll be asking is that the entire webinar is about teaching and uh, you know, research. 
then why are we focusing on search and research? Well, I'm going to talk about the application of search and research. Both of these terms are in existence, which means both of these terms have their own uses. Uh, but sometimes what we do is we use them synonymously as in, you know, searching is equal to research. So if you're sprouting out, you know, a lot of uh, conference papers overnight, what you're doing is searching uh, the write up of different people, just, you know, putting them together like a Frankenstein and passing it off as research. And uh, also, you know, sometimes we go about doing things in a roundabout way where a simple search uh, can bring you results. So um, search. Uh, is uh, um, applicable mostly uh, when we are teaching. So when we are teaching, we need to update our knowledge and a simple search would suffice in that. And um, also I would like to say that, uh, you know, when you want to break an egg open, a simple tap from a spoon uh, is sufficient to crack it open. Uh, but for that, you know, just because you know how to, you know, uh, use a sledgehammer, you get a sledgehammer and you try to uh, crack an egg open, it does not work. So search has its own applications and research. And when we're talking about search, you know, the kind of teaching that you do as a teacher is more or less limited to your classroom, to your set of students. So it's a localized affair. But when you're talking about research, your research you're taking in a heavy duty research is mostly to refine and improve upon existing practices. And these practices are not only applicable to the small group of students in your classroom, but they are applicable to anybody in the world who has who can get a benefit out of them. So just to take an example, um, all of us use uh, you know multiple choice questions uh, as a, as a, a teacher in the classroom, but. With the uh, you know advent of COVID and you know in the fact that it is here to stay, we are forced to use online software to conduct our MCQ. So somebody who made the Google form actually has refined it a lot more than what it was before. So you know the application of research is for everybody, whereas what you're teaching more or less uh, stays localized to the students. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to ask uh, Shashank sir. Uh, to circulate another activity that I have for you. Now, this activity, I'm calling it the uh, EDM Marathon. Now, the remaining part of the session today, I'm going to be talking about some of the aspects or consequences of the use of internet, both for teaching and research. And each aspect I'll be talking about in terms of an EDM that I have picked up. So I want you to, you know, identify the EDMs that I'm going to be using because the idioms that I have on my slide are only half the idiom. I have not written the whole one. So I want you to stay interested in my slides and in what I have to say. And at the same time, you know, mark the correct answers as to which idiom I'm using right now and what is the correct way of, uh, you know, saying that particular idiom. So uh, Shang, sir, can you please post the second link? Uh, yes, uh, the link has been posted in the chat box. And again, I will right. be posting it in the WhatsApp groups as well. Uh, and okay. uh, one appeal uh, to the participants. So uh, kindly refrain from uh, sending greetings in the chat box so that uh, the links can be accessible, accessed by all the participants and they don't get hidden. Yes, too many good morning messages and the link uh, we post uh, uh, somehow gets buried under that, uh, you know, onslaught of messages. So I'll wait just for another minute. Uh, you don't have to complete the entire form right now. You know, as and when I go to my slide, you can, you know, go to the idiom that I have given and you can answer it. So it is. Uh, nothing but a little bit of, uh, you know, fun activity that I've added to the session. OK, so I'll be moving on to part two, which is a cautionary tale on the use of Internet, uh, both for teaching and for research. And in, in part two, I have subdivided this section in 2.1, where 
I'm going to be talking about the use, the problems of using the internet for teachers and teaching. And then I'll move on to 2.2, where I'm going to be talking about the use of internet and the drawbacks in terms of research. So yesterday I was watching this wonderful uh, uh, short talk given by uh, Chomsky, and he said uh, that the teacher is uh, more concerned about uh, covering the portion in the classroom. But a real teacher is one who is more concerned about discovering things in the classroom along with the students. And it it somehow, you know, this particular saying, it stayed in my head and I thought that, you know, I can use it uh, for my webinar today. So moving on from there, let me talk about the first uh, caution. And I think this one is very easy for all the participants where you know that the idiom goes like all that glitters is not gold. OK, so. Uh, here is an example of a, a forward that I got on WhatsApp and it um, talks about a Tibetan monk uh, who was discovered in Nepal's mountains and is considered the oldest living person in the world. Now the age of this person is 196 years, that's almost like, you know, uh, two centuries. He is in a meditation state in a trance called uh, Takatet and was found wrapped in fur. Some experts consider him a mummy, but he has vital signs. So when I read this, I'm like, wow, is it even possible that human beings can, you know, survive for so long? And then another friend of mine, you know, very, uh, you know, erudite, gyani kind of person said, yes, you know, if you meditate and you do yoga and you forget about worldly things, then it is very much possible to, you know, extend your lifespan. And then the next part of the WhatsApp message says that amongst his belongings, they found the paper which at the bottom said, keep believing everything on WhatsApp. So I found it so hilarious that, you know, most of the time we are so willing to believe everything that we read online. Now, this is about WhatsApp. Again, it is in the use of internet. But otherwise, also, when we see anything in the written form, psychologically, we are more prone to believing it. And we are so lazy as creatures that we don't even bother to go and find out the authenticity of the news. So actually, I went and read about, about this monk. Now, his mummified body was discovered and he was in the news because even the mummified body had a beautiful smile on its face. That was the original news, but see how people have twisted it just for a little bit of fun. So uh, I'm taking another example. I, I added the slide just like, you know, uh, uh, about half an hour back. Now let's see how Wikipedia works. Now most of our students, they swear by Wikipedia and they don't want to research, look or search beyond Wikipedia. So I just went ahead and, you know, uh, you know, typed in that who can edit Wikipedia. This is this is from my account and you will see the answer is that anyone can. Anyone can write on Wikipedia. It is open to all and can be modified and edited by anyone. However, Wikipedia's administrators protect some pages from direct editing if they believe they are regularly subject to, to vandalism. OK, now this is the fun part. Tonight, uh, you know, after your dinner, if you have free time, just go ahead and open up any uh, page on Wikipedia and try to edit the information. In fact, you can, uh, you know, edit the date of birth of Mahatma Gandhi for all you want. Now, before the administrators are aware of, uh, you know, somebody playing the fool out there, you know, maybe a million people have already read the wrong information that is there. So even though there is some system of monitoring it, not everything that is written on Wikipedia is monitored. So we need to understand from this fact that whenever we are referring to different websites, different information, we need to first of all go with the understanding that people like us and maybe people who are not very uh, you know, scholarly or erudite might also be adding on information on the internet. So we need to be very, very circumspect. Next. Question number two, this idiom says uh, we are spoiled for choice. Now in the past, the teacher used to be the only source of information. In fact, the teacher was the fountainhead of information. And if you go back to the Gurukul system, students or learners would fight amongst each other 
uh, to figure out who will be the one who will get the honor of being chosen by a certain guru. Because the better your guru is, the more the, the higher the possibility is that the more skilled you become under his training or tutelage. Now, this was in the past. Today, your students come to the classroom already with a lot of information. And in fact, most of the students today, the older they get, they come and say that we don't need a teacher. Everything that we need to know is already there somewhere on the Internet. So the role of the teacher today has changed. We are no more the sole repository of knowledge. Today we are the rescue squad. Now, what do I mean by the rescue squad and how our job has changed? Now, students are uh, pretty green behind their ears. They know how to access information, but they do not have the discernment to understand which information is proper, which is improper, which is good, which is not so good. OK, which is helpful, which is not helpful. So they are buried under an onslaught of information and then they do not know how to, you know, summarize and get to information which is useful. So basically, they keep sinking under all that information. And this is where we step in. We step in as the rescue squad because here we know to guide the students that forget about this information. It's not so good. OK, and you should focus. So guiding them towards what kind of information or knowledge is helpful for them is our job right now. We are no more the ones, you know, giving out the information. We are only redirecting our students in the right direction. OK, so moving on to caution number three. OK, this one's an easy enough idiom for you to identify. Every rose has its thorn. So every time you go on the Internet, you must be aware that there are two sides to every story. So, you know, when you look at some information, you find information which is correct and which is good. Uh, uh, I want to give you an example. So in, in, in my co college, I have colleagues our students rarely ever challenge us as teachers, but it's the colleagues who challenge us. And, you know, if you say something, they'll be like, no, the Internet, uh, the somebody, some other, you know, um, uh, great uh, bigwig has said something else. So for everything that you say, there will be good information. There will also be bad or opposing information. And there will be uh, information which is totally off the uh, off the topic, but still it is there. So uh, when you go to the classroom, you should know 360 degree about the topic, which means you should know the correct information about the topic. You should know about all the, uh, you know, information, erroneous information that is still floating around on the Internet about the topic. Now, why do you need to know the erroneous in information is because if you get into a debate with a student, with a colleague, wh whoever challenges you, you should be able to, uh, you know, support your stance. You know, you should be able to uh, justify why what you are saying is the right way of looking at it. And you can only justify when you know, you know, what you're fighting against. So you need to be aware of all the kind of information, the good, bad and the ugly. OK, next one is, uh, you know, uh, this idiom is a little, uh, uh, you, you know, uncommon. So it says that there are more than one way to skin a cat. OK, now what do I mean by this? Uh, initially, as uh, teachers, you know, we are um, uh, not initially. I see many teachers a little rigid. Uh, in their uh, level of acceptance. So we are like my way or the highway. So if I'm teaching you to solve a math problem in a certain way, that is the way to go. So if any student comes ahead and shows a different method, which is equally correct, we are not very willing to accept it. And this is not just about math. This is about everything. So there are there may be a million ways to do the same thing, but to understand and accommodate that there can be more than one answer is uh, you know the needs of the time right now you know so here is an example um, if I asked you a question like what happens when we drop a wooden duster from our hand all of you here who are in the webinar your common sense will say that what kind of a stupid question is this obviously if you drop a duster from your hand it's going to fall down because of gravity now that is the correct answer but there are other correct answers also depending on where you are. So let me just uh, take you through the example. If you're standing on Earth, obviously the duster will fall down because of gravity. 
but there can be other scenarios. What if you are, you know, underneath sea water? Now, if you let go of the duster or it falls out of your hand, it would float up. OK, and then the third possibility is if you're in space and, you know, you let go of the duster, the duster will hover somewhere around your hand. So this is this might be a very, very silly and childish example to explain the concept that we need to be more accommodating of more than one correct answer. But this is actually very true and we need to have that flexibility in us. OK, uh, next question number five. You know, this one is a well known idiom. Put your thinking cap on. OK, now this is where I learned a lesson uh, during the this uh, this um, lockdown. So. Uh, every time I give my students an assignment online, they finish it within a minute or two and they submit. And I'm like, wow, these students are so smart and intelligent. You know, they're able to do it. And then I realize that everything I'm giving them is simply copy pasting it from the Internet and giving it to me. So what we need to do is we need to change the kind of assignments that we give our students where they are forced to apply their knowledge. They're free to troll the Internet to get the knowledge, but there'll be no direct answer anywhere on the Internet, uh, you know, where they can copy paste. So I'll just share an example of what happened to me with my students last week. So last week I was taking my students to the, uh, you know, concept of how to write good sales letters. So I was trying to be a little democratic with my students and I said that, OK, you take any product of your choice and you write a sales letter to me, your customer and convince me to buy your uh, you know, product. And in the next two minutes, uh, you know, 150 of my students, they have submitted the assignments. And then when I check it through, uh, you know, a plagiarism checker, each and every letter has been picked up from the Internet. So the idea is that why should you as a teacher have to go and be a police and, you know, check their work through a plagiarism checker, which of course you can and you should do. But the idea is that you need to modify your assignment in such a way that they cannot find direct answers on the Internet. So after that, I learned my lesson. Now I give them activities where they really have to, you know, slog and they have to think, uh, you know, put on their thinking cap on and then only they're able to solve it and uh, submit it. OK, uh, moving on, I'm coming uh, now that I've spoken about uh, the you know problems of using the Internet for uh, a teacher in the day to day teaching. I'm going to talk. I'm going to be talking about, you know, the problems of using the Internet for people who are into research. OK, now here is an interesting um, quote. It says that man can learn nothing except by going from the known to the unknown until and unless you have the guts to take a leap of faith into the darkness uh, with the knowledge that maybe I'll land somewhere. I will land somewhere. That is the spirit of a good research. So Moving on to caution number one about using the Internet while you're researching. So this idiom says what sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. That means if it works for you, it, sh it should be applicable for somebody else. Also, there is no discrimination. The, the rule applies to everybody. OK, so it is easy to steal online. OK, we can simply copy paste from other people's word, paraphrase it a little here and there pass it off as our own, but because we are in the Internet era, whatever you write is going to find its way online some way or the other. Even the journals that you're publishing these days, if you're opting to publish in, the journals uh, will have a soft version somewhere. So if you can still, it is easier for the audience to read and understand that what you have written is mostly stolen material. So stealing is easy, but getting caught online is easier. There are a lot of people smarter than us. And the next thing is that, you know, at times there might be people, serious researchers who have their original idea and they have written about it. Uh, but if you steal somebody else's work, then you are open to somebody else, you know, uh, coming and thieving your idea too. So it's it's a two way street. It works both ways. So, you know, uh, don't do unto others what you wouldn't want them to do unto you. Don't pilfer from other people's work and that will ensure that people will respect your work and not pilfer from you. OK, moving to caution number two. This idiom says a dime a dozen, which means it's so cheap that it is worthless. So, uh, you know, don't publish, don't rush. OK, 
Okay, thank you. So don't rush in to publish just because there is an abundance. Okay, uh, please take care of your microphone. I think that was by accident, but uh, just be a little more cautious. Okay, so what I was saying is just because there is an abundance of conferences, uh, don't think that you have to go ahead and publish in every conference and your worth is measured by the number of papers that you have. I see people's, uh, you know, CVs and they have 60 or 70 papers they have written. And I keep wondering, how is it even humanly possible to write 60, 70 papers? Because a good paper takes you about almost six to seven months or a year of working on it to, you know, give it some sort of shape. Now, why is there an abundance of conference? Because conferences these days are online. If there were any physical conferences, it takes around six to seven months to arrange for a physical conference because so many factors have to be taken into account. But if it's an online conference, any Tom, Dick and Harry today is coming up and uh, you know creating a conference. They're charging people money. And also there are a lot of us who are actually who fall for this you know trap into this trap and we post papers uh, thinking that it is increasing the number of papers. OK, now please avoid such predatory conferences and journals because again, they are a dime a dozen. And even if you have 80 papers, the moment you open your mouth, people will know how much of those papers that you have written are really worth it. OK, caution number three, digging one's own grave. Now, there are a lot of software, you know, which is assisting us as teachers today. Uh, one example I would like to take is that, you know, I keep insisting uh, that my students, you know, run every assignment they submit through a plagiarism software. Now that ensures that you know they have not stolen anything from the internet but there is a downfall to it also is the fact that every time you post your work onto any uh, plagiarism software whether it is a purchased one or it's a free one the company which has the software has a copy of your data so it is very much possible for companies to misuse your data by selling it to interested parties so when you are using a checker, the thing to do is that you need to avoid, you know, checking uh, data which is sensitive in nature. For example, you have uh, written an article, a research article, which is a statistical empirical study. Uh, please go ahead and run all these sections uh, in the checker, but do not run the result and discussion uh, section because that is the crux of your entire paper. And if somebody, uh, you know, gets their hand on it, they can easily write out a whole new paper without any effort at all. So, you know, there is a downside to using technology also, and we need to use uh, most of the software that we have with caution. We need to use them, but we need to use them wisely. OK, uh, moving on to the third part of uh, today's session, where I'm going to be talking about uh, leveraging the internet, both for teaching and research. Now, whenever there is some new technology, please understand that there will be drawbacks. But the positives are a lot more than the drawbacks, and hence it's here to stay. We use the internet, we use WhatsApp because it's more, you know, it's it's beneficial. So even if there are drawbacks, we'll still go ahead and use them. So let us see what are the benefits that we can take out of, you know, having the, uh, you know, uh, world at our fingertips through the internet. So the first part of this, I'm going to be talking about the use of the Internet for our day to day teaching. And the second part of this um, section will be about researching and using of Internet. So here is this uh, person saying you can't teach people everything they need to know. OK, but the best thing that you can do is position the knowledge where your students can find it as and when they need it. We try to, you know, uh, take our students at gunpoint and we try to force information into their head. They will not take anything if they're not interested. I teach my students, you know, how to uh, prepare uh, your resume or uh, prepare for a, an interview. They're least interested during the lecture. But when the, uh, you know, when the, uh, the, the semester comes in where all the companies come in for campus interviews, they write back to me, ma'am, what to do about this, what to do about that. I said, go and read up about this. 
So you can just make sure that the material is available, the knowledge uh, the, the database is available, and you have to wait and see as and when the students uh, you know, access it. So coming to benefit number one uh, about using the internet is change is the only constant. <coughs> one minute. OK, so uh, keep yourself updated, you know, what you uh, learned or what you taught maybe five years back might not be of any good use today. So I will just give you an example about myself. <coughs> Till the beginning of last year, I was teaching presentation skills, so I had slides prepared on presentation skills. But after the lockdown, all presentations went online. So this year, I'm forced to talk about presentation skills, specifically online presentation skills. So, you know, I have to constantly update and the same goes for every other teacher. Next is, so what is the benefit of using the internet is that I constantly compare my work with other teachers who are dealing with the same subject. So I'm constantly trawling the internet. I visit other people's uh, you know, YouTube channels, other people's websites. Whenever there's a webinar, no matter how busy I am, I switch on the webinar. And even if I'm not able to see the slides because I, maybe I'm cooking, but I keep the sound audio on so that at least I hear what the person is saying. And there is something that I learn from every presenter, every person, and that helps me to understand where am I? Where is my level? Am I poor? Do I need to work hard on this aspect or I'm fairly acceptable? OK, or am I of an international standard or I'm nowhere near it? OK, next thing is you have to think of yourself as a software. If you don't, you know, update yourself, you will be obsolete very soon. And soon, uh, you know, teachers will be replaced by, uh, you know, online self-taught tutorial information, things like that. OK, moving on to benefit number two. This one says the world is your oyster and uh, geography is no limitation. Many of us, we went back to our hometown and we taught almost for six months from our hometown. No need to come to uh, you know classroom. So we know that geography is not a limitation. And forget about a localized geography. Today, my webinar uh, might be, you know, there might be participants from a, a far off place like Argentina, you know, listening to what I'm saying. So geography is not a limitation anymore. And this has only been possible by Internet. Next thing is rise of la language and cultural barriers. This is very interesting. I have noticed that, uh, you know, uh, when there are YouTube uh, lessons, I can switch on uh, the captions in the language that I want, or I can use Google Translator. So today, not knowing a particular language is not a barrier for me. If I'm interested in learning, I will find a way to translate whatever. So we have risen above the problems of language and cultural barriers, and in fact, a lot of people watch my videos in English by translating it them with some kind of caption in other countries. OK, next, this one is very interesting. A real world shows, you know, when your presence is there online, there is no need for nepotism. Uh, you know, uh, there are so many times, you know, you will uh, go for jobs, but because of, you know, nepotism in government jobs, you will not get a post, even though you have the qualifications or, you know, you will be invited to something to be a part of a board or to be a part of a committee only if you have connections. But that does not matter in, in, in on the Internet. On the Internet, you are known for your skills. So if you are a good teacher, if your content is good, you know, nobody will care for anybody else. So here is one place where you can showcase your real worth. In my college, I'm like ghar ka murgi dal barabar. Nobody really cares for me, but still people once in a while here and there would call me for a talk because maybe they find something uh, interesting in what I have to say. OK, moving on to benefit number three at your fingertips, you know, so, uh, you know, you can create online content. And I understood the importance of this after my students, uh, you know, insisted that I come up with a channel of my own. 
I'm, I'm a very lazy creature. I have never, I don't even have a Facebook account. You know, I'm that uh, low in terms of my presence on the internet. But because of the insistence of my students, I created a YouTube channel of my own. And believe me, I started with four subscribers, which are my family, immediate family members and a few friends who subscribe at my request because I, I've, I've tried something new. But today, you know, I have a larger subscription only because you know people are actually going to the content and checking and it has increased my visibility who am i i'm nobody in this world of billions of people nobody knows who is jim k but because i have a channel and because i keep uploading some content maybe people around the world would at least know me uh, you know by my name or you know uh, things like that by my work next is your uh, teaching content finds a permanent place. You know, it, it's it's a, a place where your work is. So I've been teaching for last 20 years and there is nothing to say or show for what I've taught all these years. All the students that I have taught, you ask them anything about what I've taught, they've forgotten about it. It, it. There is no retention, there is no impact. But now that I have a channel, or maybe you open your own website, you know, whatever material you have to share, it is there and people can access, you know, access it. So tomorrow, if I drop dead from a stroke or a heart attack, my YouTube channel will still be there. And whatever few videos I've uploaded, they will still be there for a longest time to come. Okay, next is I'm moving to benefit, uh, which says beat the, not the heat, but beat the clock. Uh, you learn new tools and software every day online, and it, you know, decreases the amount of manual work and it saves a lot of time. Okay, to give my example, when I was doing my research work, I have typed every letter of words that come in the list of references, because at that time, uh, you know, I was not aware of uh, citation machines or citation generators, which I'm aware of today. So I have done a lot of donkey's work and I have spent a lot of time. So, you know, my research took me seven years. Today, the same kind of research that I have done, a statistical research can be undertaken and completed within three years time. So, you know, using and learning a lot of tools and software has helped, you know, save time. And um, most importantly, it is giving you faster, better and accurate results. Okay, let me give you an example here uh, India has still not caught on uh, to the open open platform software called uh, uh, LaTeX now LaTeX is a software which allows you to you know document your research papers and books in a very systematic way and it is own inbuilt uh, you know way in which it prepares the bibliography for you it does the numbering page number so it helps you a whole lot you know in saving you manual work and yet in India we're still not using uh, you know LaTeX people all around the world they're using LaTeX and they're taking the benefits out of it now I as a person you know as a teacher what I did was I went and did a course a three month course from IIT Bombay and I learned LaTeX and now I'm in a position to insist and tell my students or maybe the webinar participants that please stop working on Word document whenever you are, you know, typing your uh, research article or paper, please shift to LaTeX because that is specifically meant for something. It will give you better and more accurate results. So this is the benefit of, you know, being there on the Internet and you can learn, you know, things uh, on your own. So moving on uh, to the last section of today's uh, webinar is where I'm going to be talking about the advantages of the internet for people who are into research. Now the internet moves very fast. In the past, we could afford to sit and analyze forever. It took me seven years to do my, uh, you know, a PhD. If you asked me, I could have taken another five more years. I, I was going about it at my own slow pace. But in the present, the first mover has the advantage. So today, if I'm given the opportunity to undate, undertake another research project. I'll make sure that I finish it within six months, one year, because I know that before I can come up with my findings, somebody else would have already taken up the same topic and produced something better than me. So, you know, it's an age where how quick you, how, how fast you strike the iron when it's hot is that matters and the internet helps you in this. Okay, so first benefit, the sky is the limit. 
you can access information sitting in the comfort of your house you can access information from a library in new york without even having to go to new york you can get a subscription there um, next is you learn anything you want to know boundaries nobody will stop you from moving out of uh, you know english and going and trying to learn uh, you know uh, maybe mandarin language so there is nothing to stop you and uh, when i was doing my research i did not want to do it in english i was not interested so i approached so many other departments and they literally threw me out saying that uh, you know i am uh, not in a position to take any kind of research in other subjects because i don't have a base but today i can go online i can do n number of courses as and when and what i want to do there is no limit there is no boundary and there is no dependency okay for example towards the last part of my research i needed a statistician to do my statistical work because at that time uh, there were no youtube tutorials where i could learn how to do a t test or a z test so i had to you know approach so many statisticians and you know i had to wait at the mercy when they'll be free to do it for me or to teach me so there was a lot of dependency now if i want to learn about a new statistical test i just go on youtube and i can you know do a tutorial of my own at my own pace so this is the first benefit of having the internet second benefit for researchers that you know your data is in safe hands you won't believe me but i have lost my data in the last 7 years while i was doing my phd i lost valuable data twice and i had to start from scratch because like a fool i had everything stored uh, in my hard drive but i've learned it hard the hard way so now i don't keep important data only in my hard drive i also keep a copy of it in in a cloud service uh, somewhere so you you store your data safely and the best part is that you can access the uh, stored data from anywhere uh there was a time when i used to use uh, you know uh, photocopied handouts for my uh, lectures so uh, there are days when you know i used to forget the handouts in the in my house i reached uh, my college and then i realized that i don't have my handout so most of the days those lectures would not go well because i did not have the material which i wanted to use during my class or my tutorial but today because my data is you know in the cloud i can access it from anywhere moving on to benefit number 3 many hands make light work so today is the time of you know collaborative work and the software and the internet allows you to get in touch with experts today i want to do uh, you know in one of the webinars i met uh, met a very interesting researcher who who is from the department of psychology and uh, you know we had a promise with each other that he is going to assist me in my next uh, you know research paper so i can get in touch with experts you can get in touch with experts and do interdisciplinary collaborative work you can go to any discipline any field and you know start working together and the best part is that it saves a lot of time you spend in coordinating traveling uh, like this year also we were working on the syllabus uh, for the engineering students and uh, you know i remember two years back it was during the rainy season and every now and then we used to travel uh, in the rainy season just to have meetings to work on the syllabus but this semester we sat in the comfort of our house and through zoom we were able to uh, you know finish preparing the syllabus so you know, it, it cuts down on a lot of your uh, you know work time okay uh moving to the benefit you know uh you know the saying that actions speak louder than words but today uh, i'm going to change it into a saying that numbers speak louder than words and today you can move away from qualitative uh, you know research a lot of people indulge in you know literature review kind of research because they are unable to get data or they are afraid to analyze statistical data but today it is so easy to collect data mostly in the form of survey form uh, in uh, survey forms and polls and things like that so if you have data then it becomes very e easy for you to analyze data with the kind of tools that you have statistical packages and all so as a result what has happened is that the number of you know empirical statistical research papers have increased because of the availability of the internet and the easy availability of data from people so primary data it's become easy to collect i don't need to physically go and meet people i can do it online and as a result it has helped 
uh, you know, researchers to do very, very good number crunching research, not qualitative research, but quantitative research. OK, so now that I've spoken about, you know, uh, the the advantages and drawbacks that we uh, get out of the Internet, both as teachers and researchers, now is the time for you to decide whether you want to be a teacher. Now, if you are a teacher, only a teacher, then you're helping students, but we're able to help them hands on. You know, nobody can teach a student the way a teacher can teach in the classroom. So you are already doing a great job. The only problem of being just a teacher is that the great things that you're doing in your classroom is limited only to the students who are your students. It's not going out to the whole world in general. So look at the other side also, you can opt to be a researcher. There are a lot of people who think that research is their sole aim in life because they want to help the world, which is very fine. You can use research to help the world, but you miss out on the real action. You actually talking about, you know, educational tools, but you have never dealt with students. So you don't uh, know the fun of actual real interaction with students, and yet you're sitting in your ivory tower and you're working on research regarding educational things. So the other option is that you can choose to be a teacher as well as a researcher. There's nothing to stop you teaching in your class and also being a researcher. What happens is that when you understand as a teacher what the students need, where is the lag, you can do a gap analysis, you know, you can find out the area. And then as a researcher, you can go about finding solutions to fix a problem. So the choice is yours. You can be a teacher who is limited to searching the Internet. You can be limited to a researcher, you know, who's only crunching number or you can be a wonderful combination of both a teacher and the researcher and uh, with that I come to the end of my uh, um, talk now this is my phone number in case anybody is interested in getting in touch with me or you have queries uh, you know regarding research uh, please you can get back to me on whatsapp this is my email id and as I mentioned earlier during the talk that I've come up with this uh, channel of my own now this is how my channel looks now, I'm a very, very short lady with only four feet and 10 inches uh, to my name. Uh, but, uh, you know, since childhood, people used to say that, uh, you know, you talk a lot, you know, you talk big. So hence the name of my channel is, you know, Tall Talks from a Short Lady. And if you feel that, you know, you would like to access some of the kind of educational material that I have on my channel, you may subscribe. Subscribing is free. And the only thing is, uh, if I upload a fresh video, you will just be getting a notification and you can watch it. Uh, so it is completely voluntary. And with that, I will say thank you. OK, uh, I will stop uh, sharing my screen. And uh, I would also uh, take this opportunity uh, uh, to post the link of my YouTube channel uh, in the chat box. Uh, sir, can you allow me to post in something on the chat box? Shashank, sir? Ma'am, the chat box is uh, already available. To me, let me just check. I... Yeah, it's, it's enabled for everyone. Okay, and in the meanwhile, can you post the uh, link? that I've given you. Hello. 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 Swati ma'am. Ma'am is asking yes, if it's recorded and it can be forwarded to. Yeah, yeah, ma'am, yeah. Okay. We will make arrangements, ma'am. It will take... Able to... uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll be sharing, ma'am. We'll be sharing this link in the WhatsApp group. We are sharing, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, I see that some um, many people are unable to uh, see the chat box. So the third link that uh, Dr. Biswas has shared here, I'm just going to quickly present it on the screen so that they can type it in the uh, address bar as well. Just and I would like to also uh, announce. Uh, uh, my yes. chat box is disabled somehow. Uh, yes, ma'am. I think that's one flaw with MS Teams that the chat box is sometimes yeah, not accessible okay. to everyone. <laughs> uh, 
uh, sure. just just a second uh, for the third link i am just going to present the screen now so the participants can i am uh, sending across a feedback form uh, kindly fill it up to help me out to refine my content and my topics so i'll be very grateful if you take actually 30 seconds to fill it out it's a very very short form yes uh so the participants can just type in this link which will give you access to the feedback form that is tinyurl.com/fdb link 3 we have posted this link in the whatsapp group also so you can access it from there can it be posted in the chat box here sir Uh, yes, that is already uh, posted yeah. there. But uh, like I said, not everyone is able to access the chat box. So I okay. have again. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can post it a second time because it gets uh, lost uh, underneath all the messages that come through. Will you please post it a second time on the chat box uh, here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Here I would like to make an announcement that we are open to uh, question and answer session. So, if you have your question, you can post it in the chat box. We shall uh, dedicate ten minutes to the question and answer session. thereafter we break for lunch and uh, it is a sincere request to all the participants who are joining us for the afternoon session when the session is in progress please refrain from posting your chats it's a lot of disturbance and uh, deterring factor for the uh, speaker and uh, all my learned friends please oblige to this request because it's of an immense disturbance please contain it after the uh, talk is over you all are open to post your chats a uh, questions and queries it's a request please thank you i think and all the participants are very hungry so no questions maybe <laughs> which is good for me <laughs> i think they are feeling feedback from ma'am um, we'll wait for uh, just 5 minutes and yes. those who have question they can also like those who are not able to access uh, the uh, chat box chat. they can raise their hands they can raise their hands uh i want to thank the participants for all the lovely comments they have uh, written in the chat box i'm just taking my time to read through them so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart Uh, so I, I do see here two raised hands. So can we have their questions? Or oh. Dr. L Lalita Rawat here wants to ask a question here. So yeah, okay. So I, uh, Dr. Dr. Rawat, I'm just I have just uh, you can just unmute yourself and ask your questions to Dr. Bishwas. Uh, Dr. Lalita Rawat, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Meanwhile, if the second person is ready, you can move to them, Shashank sir. Okay, somebody wanted my mobile number. Now, since I'm not able to use the chat box, I'll just show the uh, slide where I had mentioned it. Can you see it, ma'am? You can take a screenshot yes, if you yes, want. Yes, yes, we can see. Yeah, yeah.
uh, at my request, quite a few participants have subscribed to my channel. So a uh, heartfelt thank you to you for your support. Thank you so much. Uh, there is a there is a question uh, apparently from Mr. Smith Sharma. So can you please okay. unmute yourself and ask the question? Yeah, Mr. Smith Sharma. Uh, you can unmute and ask post your question. Smith Sharma, you can unmute yourself. Smith Sharma. Are the participants facing any trouble in unmuting and asking questions? Those who can access the chat can put it on the chat box also. Susan, ma'am, if you could read out the questions to me. OK, ma'am. Yeah, if there. at all there are any. I doubt. <laughs> no. <laughs> me too. <laughs> no, ma'am, we haven't no, received they haven't, questions. They yet. haven't posted any questions. They are only flooding yes. with compliments for you. <laughs> lot Thank of you compliments so are there. Lot of okay, so we will assume that uh, there are no questions. And uh, now, uh, ma'am, wonderful. It was very uh, wonderful session. And it was uh, interesting, informative and interactive session. On behalf of the entire team of ASL, Amity University, ma, I would like to express our sincere thanks to you, ma'am, for your excellent coverage to today's topic. I would like I also would like to extend my thank to all the participants for such a huge response and your cooperation and active participation. Thank you once again. Uh, here I would like to make a small announcement for the second session, which will be conducted by Dr. Nishweta Jendran and her topic is language teaching and research in education. We hope you we hope to see you all at sharp 2 uh, 2 p.m with the same enthusiasm. I would like to make another announcement that a quiz link will be shared in a chat box and also in the WhatsApp group through and also through your email. Each day quiz will have 10 questions based on the session that you have attended. Kindly submit the quiz within the stipulated time and to uh, there are some instructions that we have posted in the WhatsApp group. Please uh, go through the instructions regarding the certificate and uh, joining the session because there are some calls. We are getting some calls from the participants. Uh, they are facing some issues. So please the instructions that are given for joining the teams. Thank you one and all. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, just a moment. Uh, I saw two questions and I just yes. uh, take a minute. Somebody wanted to know the name of the software I was talking about. It is spelled as uh, L A T E X. X for uh, you know X ray L A T E X, but it is Let's. pronounced as LaTeX with the K sound and not the X sound. And somebody wanted to know why I want the email ID. Why have I made it compulsory? Uh, I'm not going to be using your email IDs to push sale anything, but maybe if I have webinars in the future, at the most I can send you an invitation letter if I have your email and that is the reason I've asked for the email. Uh, it is uh, nothing that I'm forcing you to do. So yeah, I can very well remove it also. Thank you, I'll consider it. Thank yeah, you, ma'am. That's all from my end. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. It was wonderful having you listening to some very good English and good learning. God bless you. Please be connected with us. We shall trouble you again for more <laughs> from you. 
a very resourceful person that is but obvious from all the comments that you're getting on the uh, chat a wonderful cheerful speaker god bless you you have miles to go before you sleep <laughs> thank, thank you, you ma'am ma thank you all god the participants bless. me yeah. too again dear participants uh, we break for the lunch now and we shall resume exactly at 2 and please bear in mind the request that we have posted to you all please refrain from putting up the chats while the session is that's a request thank you everybody please join us back